I'm Peter Higgins, and I'm going to be talking about using the Arrow and DuckDB packages to wrangle bigger than RAM medical data sets of over 60 million rows with a bit about data table. Motivating problem was open payments data from the Center of Medicaid and Medicare Services. I'm going to talk about the limits of R and speed and RAM, the Arrow package, the DuckDB package, and generally about wrangling very large data. And you can see this includes 12 million records per year and a total dollar value of 10.9 billion in 2021. I usually analyze smallish data sets, carefully collected and validated data of 500 to 1,000 rows, maybe 10,000 rows on a big project. But digital data, which we increasingly have access to from CMS or clinical data warehouses, can give us much bigger data, easily over 100 million rows, often greater than 50 gigabytes, which doesn't fit in an email, but it also doesn't always work well in R, which was designed for data in RAM. The motivating problem that led me down this rabbit hole was a paper that just came out about payments to gastroenterologists. And the highlighted sentence in yellow jumped out at me. Four individuals received over a million dollars over the course of a year at least once. And then one physician received over a million dollars every year since 2014. And that was puzzling because while they strongly suggest these docs are being paid off by pharma, the classic pharma drug talk only pays about $2,000. The speaker talks about a new drug or device while the audience eats dinner on weeknights, Monday through Thursday. And most academic institutions no longer allow this. This was a thing of the 90s to early 2000s. But how do the million dollar docs actually do this? Are they actually giving 500 talks a year? When do they actually do their main job? Do they ever go home for dinner? Do they travel constantly? And how is it actually possible? There are only 208 weekday, Monday through Thursday, dinner slots per year. Something smelled kind of fishy here. So CMS has the data available publicly. You can download it. And the first thing they tell you about is these are really large files. Be careful before you download. Um, this includes every single payment from pharma or device company to a prescriber. They added NPs and PAs in 2021. In a typical year is about six gigabytes, 11 to 12 million rows and 75 variables per year. The big problem I immediately figured out was that my M1 Mac mini has 16 gigabytes of RAM and the total data from 2013 to 2021 is 94 gigabytes. Our works on data sets and memory, that's not going to fit. And so I'll walk through how I approach this and I'll use run times associated with the TikTok package. On the M1 Mac mini, your mileage may vary. Some of these are faster on Windows. There may be some issues optimizing for the Apple Silicon, but the general trends should hold. I started by trying to work on one year, six gigabytes at a time, extracting the summary data, then pulling across years. This was slow and clunky, and I needed to find a better way. My first pilot attempt, 11 million rows, 75 variables, 6.4 gigabytes. I thought it might be a little slow, so I decided to use read underscore CSV rather than base. Still took 49 minutes to read in not good for just one year. So now I have two problems, both speed and RAM capacity. More data produces more problems. So then I recalled some advice from Frank Harrell on Twitter. The cost of mastering RStat's data table is high. The benefits are twice the cost. So I looked into this and Data table has a freed function for fast reading and it actually read in the 2016 data in 93.3 seconds. That's a 30x improvement, much better. I also looked at the Vroom function for Vroom, better, but 14.3 minutes. It's about a 3.5x speed improvement. The data format works well with dplyr wrangling, but it's way slower than data table. So data table actually has a lot about it to like. It's very fast, but a lot of people are reluctant because the syntax is a bit icky to read. And I'll show you an example of classic filter group by and summarize. The filters in light brew. We're filtering for covered physicians, medical doctors, gastroenterologists, grouping by physician profile ID and calculating the total payments with a summarize. It's doable and it makes sense, but it, it's a little bit different. Sheer speed, data table is definitely worth using. 
I should point out the DT plier package is a good backend workaround. It translates dplyr verbs to data table syntax. You can just basically just library DT plier and then write in dplyr dialect, and it translates the data table dialect in the background with a very small speed cost. But it doesn't address the bigger than RAM data problem, and Vroom doesn't either. So just a moment about data on disk versus data in RAM. It's easy to get a big disk. You can get terabyte disks now, multiple terabytes. They used to be slow. They were physical platters. But now with solid state drives, they're much faster. They're still a little pricey. 16 terabytes runs around $1,800. And you need a fair amount of space, including scratch disk space for writing intermediate data. But this is the standard strategy of SAS and has been since 1960. Data in RAM is different. It's dynamic. It was much, much faster than disk. It's still faster, but not as dramatic with SSD drives. It's limited to gigabytes, not terabytes. And that's a big issue. The standard Mac configuration is eight gigabytes. Biggest is 128 gigabytes. And with big data, you can often have insufficient RAM. But this is a standard strategy of R, maybe RAM-based calculations. Now you could say just buy more RAM. It's not unreasonable. RAM's cheap, it's five to 10 gigs, dollars per gig, but my M1 Mac mini can only address 16 gigabytes. I would need a new computer at this point. I can hear Frank Harrell on my shoulder saying, come on, just buy a new computer. And I decided not today, I thought it was tempting. I always love new computer day, but the data sets just keep getting bigger. So how can you wrangle bigger than RAM data in R? And that was when I went back to Twitter. And Twitter suggested the Arrow package. It uses a data structure that works across languages. It's very efficient. So I asked, well, can it read data, big data, fast? So I tried the read CSV Arrow function for single files on the 2016 data set, 68.8 seconds, very nice, about 30% faster than data table freed. Encouraging on the speed front, a little bit faster. So what is Arrow. It's part of the Apache Arrow project, relies on the C++ library, and it uses a different data format. It's columnar, organized for efficient analytic operations on modern hardware. And it enables zero copy data sharing between R and Python, and is it available for 12 different languages. The nice thing about columnar is it's very fast, especially with modern hardware. It basically uses, rather than our traditional row and column lookup, which separates in memory buffer different variables. It keeps variables together in the memory buffer, which allows what's called SIMD, single instruction multiple data operations, which are pretty standard in modern processors, so that for a single instruction, it can process all four of these data, data items. And this means it's a bit like parallel processing with multiple cores, but at the micro vector level, which is a significant speed up, and it's available for most modern chips. And looking at speed wrangling, a comparison of a basic filter group by summarized workflow, pure data table, this is on 6.4 gigabytes, one year of data, 0 0.3 seconds. Data table with the dtplyr translation, 1.5 seconds. Arrow with dplyr verbs, 4.7 seconds, and Vroom with dplyr was too long to measure. So data table is still freaky fast. dplyr is almost as fast, and Arrow's at least in the same ballpark and getting faster. But every day, dplyr is much slower for big data, and you need some of these alternatives if you're looking at big data sets. Arrow can speed wrangle, but not all dplyr verbs are supported yet. They're all listed here including most of their basic verbs, group by and summarize and joins. And if you want to use other verbs, you have to collect the results back to a tibble before you use some of the other verbs like rank or across or other non yet, not yet supported in arrow dplyr verbs. One side benefit of multilingual arrow, arrow formatted data can be used by many languages. Collaboration the old way, somebody has a good Python routine, you copy data from R Python, run the Python routine, copy the results back to R. With Arrow, it's multilingual with less friction. All of these languages can use Arrow format. They can read and process and output in Arrow format, so you can have a multilingual pipeline. But what about the bigger than RAM problem? Can Arrow actually handle this? As of Arrow 6.0, it can analyze and process multi-file larger than memory data sets, and now it's at version 9.0. 
in a previous solution of this disk dot frame was soft deprecated in favor of arrow. So how does arrow actually do this? It partitions the data on disk into RAM sized chunks, loads a chunk at a time into RAM, analyzes it, pulls the results on disks and does this all in the background. So you don't have to manage RAM or memory size or pooling results. It's automatical. So if we try it out to create a data object in Arrow from these six data sets, I download them all to one folder, which I call data underscore years. And I use Arrow open data set, tell it where they are and you, that the format is CSV and load it into a data set. It's stored as the columnar Arrow R6 format partitioned by year. And it can load all these data into an object, 33.8 gigabytes of data, even though it's bigger than RAM. Now, Arrow has a dplyr backend, so you can write code with many of the dplyr verbs. And this is a typical example. It looks very familiar if you're used to using dplyr in the tidyverse, but it doesn't produce a result if you stop there. If you add the collect function, it pulls the result back to R and Tibble. The resulting Tibble allows you to choose. You can then use all of dplyr or data table functions that Arrow doesn't have yet, as long as the results now fit into RAM. So it's generally a good idea to select rows, select variables, and filter rows to shrink the data to RAM size if you can before you collect. Do those data shrinking steps early, then collect, then you can do whatever you want within RAM. But what if data are still bigger than RAM? What's going to happen if you want to use a tidyverse verb that Arrow does not have yet, like across? And I wanted to put all the first names and last names to uppercase, so I use mutate across. You get an error. This expression is not supported in Arrow. Call collect first to pull data in R. But this won't work if the data are still bigger than RAM. It seems like a no-win situation, but there is sort of a Kobayashi Maru workaround a function called to duckdb. So what is duckdb? It was designed to be used as an embeddable on-the-fly database like SQLite. There's no database setup required. You just load the duckdb library and go. Duckdb is an OLAP database, online analytical processing. It has a columnar structure organized by field and variable. Designed to make complex queries fast more than making data lookup table fast, which is the other kind of database or OLTP. This structure also, like Arrow, takes advantage of SAMD instruction sets to achieve speed up with modern CPUs, and it can work with the full dplyr verb set. So database on disk, what's that? Um, basically, it stores a list, not a data frame. Instead of 33.8 .3, gigs in RAM, you actually only have 135 KB, because what's in RAM after you convert to DuckDB is mostly pointers to disk. If you open up your environment pane and look at it, it's pointer, pointer, pointer all the way down. So then you collect your partition results. If we filter, provide, summarize, all this partitioning and analysis is abstracted away and it automatically happens under the hood with arrow and if needed, DuckDB. And you get nice tabular results. We process 66 million rows, 34 gigs, bigger than RAM data in 44.3 seconds a task that was not even possible in 16 gigabytes of RAM with standard tools. And you can see here some of the contenders. This one guy over six years made $12 million. This guy made $4 million. There's no way they're doing that given talk. So what was going on? We dug into it. Now, a couple of warnings. Uh, there are a couple of things about Arrow that can get you. And this one gotcha moment with Arrow. Arrow is more than 25 data types in order to work with multiple languages. And an example, integers can be int8, int16, int32, or int64. This can make joins fail due to mismatched data type, even when they look like integers, they look the same. You'll get an error, incompatible data types for corresponding join field. Turns out national prescriber ID was int64, and NPI ID was int32. That's going to fail. You can handle this by defining the data schema when you're reading in the data tables. And you need to add a schema argument to define the data types. Another warning benefit, 
Arrow is rapidly evolving. It's rapidly iterating. Current major releases from Arrow 8 to Arrow 9 are coming out every three months. They're adding new deployer verbs. It's increasingly optimized for speed. And in some cases, this provides faster big data wrangling than data table. There are limitations that are present today. May, may be resolved soon. So generally, there are three approaches to bigger than RAM data or BTR data. Read to arrow format first, wrangle with standard verbs to reduce data size. If it now fits in RAM, you collect back to R and you can wrangle with all the dplyr verbs or data table if you want the most speed. If it's still bigger than RAM, but you only need the arrow subset of dplyr verbs, you keep wrangling with the subset of dplyr verbs in arrow and collect the results back to R. If it's still bigger than RAM and you need more dplyr verbs than are available in the current arrow subset, you can use tune.db and then you can wrangle with all the dplyr verbs. So back to the question, did 50 people actually do 250 drug talks per year? No, nearly all of the top 50 in payments were from royalties from patents. Greater than 1 million per year in royalties for John Fortran. Number two is Bennett Roth. What were these patents for? Well, it turns out the first guy, number one, Go Lightly. He was the inventor of Go Lightly and there's a lot of money in that. A lot of money in getting people cleaned out for colonoscopies. And the Dr. Bennett Roth created the RothNet for retrieving polyps. Again, colonoscopies are big business. But there's always more than one guy. And here's an example. Uh, one person made 495000 in income in 2018 with no royalties. Drug talks, consulting, etc. Gave a total of 171 payments for drug talks out of 208 possible. And there were 78 other people with over 500K over six years without royalties. So take home points for in terms of speed. Read underscore CSV is two to three times faster than base, but it gets really slow when you get over 10 million rows of data. Faster options include data table freed, read CSV arrow, and room. Faster options for wrangling big data. Data table is great as long as it fits in RAM. D2 pliers a front end for data table that can speed it up. And arrow with the D plier back end gives you good speed, a growing set of D plier verbs, and the ability to go bigger than RAM. Take home points for bigger than RAM data. SAS folks have owned bragging rights for years with data on disk. Only SAS can process bigger than RAM data sets. Now with arrow and sometimes adding in DuckDB, R can do this also in three easy steps. Read it in as arrow structured data. With arrow table, read a CSV arrow or open data set. You then wrangle, sometimes directly with dplyr functions. If it's small enough for RAM, you can collect and wrangle further with all verbs or go with data table. If it's still bigger than RAM, you need particular functions. You can convert to .db and then wrangle with dplyr functions on disk. And remember to always collect your results out of arrow and you'll be in shape for bigger than RAM data sets. There are a bunch of resources for learning Arrow, DuckDB, and Data Table. I put links here on the slide. And thank you very much. I'm happy to take questions.